Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. You're watching Old Car Auto Guy. We've got a special guest showing up at the shop today. It's a winner of a contest we had on Instagram not too long ago, so stay tuned. So Jonathan had an appointment here today to get some snow tires put on his Nissan Rogue and well he had to do an errand and ask me if I had a vehicle he could borrow. Well I let him borrow grandma. He's been gone for about an hour now. I haven't seen him. I'm getting worried. So it's been almost two hours now that Jonathan has been gone with grandma and uh, I'm not just getting worried. I'm starting to get a little bit ticked off. If any of you guys know who Jonathan Hat is, you'll know what kind of mischief this guy can get into. And when he's driving my car, I don't quite know what to think about that. Well, looky, looky, who finally decides to show up. Uh, yeah, I get detained at the border because of the uh, stupid rims you put on. They said oh, I was impersonating yeah. an officer. Yeah, yeah. Then there was yeah. an old lady look, that wanted look, to buy it. I'll take that did... shirt back too, look. Nope, I won that fair and square. <laughs> yeah, the old ladies really like it. I bet they do. Poor grandma. Of course, guys, Jonathan and I were just joking around. I let him borrow the car. He was really only gone for about a half an hour. It wasn't that big of a deal. On that note, guys, let's get into this video. Hey guys, Jason here from Old Car Auto Guy. Today, we are gonna be doing some work on the Grey Goose. You'll notice that our check engine light and our windshield washer fluid light is back on. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try and tackle each of those issues and see what's going on. So let's get out to the shop, get her up on the hoist, and we'll go from there. So we've made it back out here to the shop and before we put the car up on the hoist, one of the things that somebody had mentioned to me in a previous video well, quite a while ago was uh, how do you put a car up on a hoist? Like, where do you know where to lift? So before we go too much further, let's kind of give you a little bit of a tutorial on how I do it. Maybe it's not the right way, but it's how I do it. It's how I feel safe when I'm underneath the car. So let's show you what you're looking for. So before we go too far, one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is that when you go to a, get your car inspected, at least here in New Brunswick, I'm sure it's the same with most places, your rocker panels have to be intact with no holes. And people don't get why that is. Well, that's where the structural integrity of your vehicle is. That's where you should be lifting on your car. Most vehicles will have a spot designated where to lift, kind of like this Volkswagen. If you see this little cut out here in the plastic molding well right directly under that is where the seam of the floor pan and the side body structure meet that's where all the strength is so that is where you're going to want to put the pad of the hoist let's take a look this little pinch weld right here that's where the pad is going to go up and lift on the car and we'll show you once we get the car up in the air a little bit better look and on the back side here, there's a little arrow kind of grooved in or molded into the plastic, which tells you this is where you should be putting the hoist arm in the rear. 
The other thing to remember when you're putting a car up on the hoist is to always let the hoist arms rest on the safety locks, like so. The reason for that is, is that if you have all the stress on the cables and a cable breaks, well, it could come down, jarring the car to the point where it jars it off of the arm. So always have it in the resting, uh, always have it resting on the locks. So as I tried to show you before, this is the seam where the floor pan and the outside panel of the vehicle meet that's pinch welded together. This is where the structural integrity is up front. Some people will come right inside here to a frame rail. Well, that's not really a frame rail. All that is, is the floor pan of your car. We come back here and the same thing. We've got your seam right here and that is where we want to lift. So one of the things that we're going to be working on today is we're going to be replacing the fuel filter on this car. I don't know when the last time it was done. We do have a little bit of a hitching uh, once it gets up there in the higher RPM range. And we're hoping it's nothing serious, but I've already done the uh, spark plugs. We've got coils on the way. We're going to do a simple fuel filter change today, and I'll show you where it's located. So if you can't find your fuel filter, all you've got to do is find your fuel tank. And that's this big black plastic thing. If you can see where all your lines come out, which are right there, and follow them up, they'll, they'll come all the way up the length of the car until they reach the engine. In behind, or up underneath this plastic piece here is where the fuel filter is. And you can see it right there. And that's what we're gonna be changing today. So we've gotta get this piece of plastic down out of the way so we can get to it. So upon further inspection, you'll see how rusty the nuts are. I'm not sure those are gonna come off. We've got one there, one really bad one up in there. So we're gonna uh, try and take them off with a wrench first. If not, then we may have to break them off and just remove that panel altogether. So what we've got is two 10 millimeter uh, screws that kind of hold this onto the frame. And all that's doing is uh, holding the bracket up in there so that we can take it off and expose the filter. Now the filter that's on it is an original Volkswagen Audi filter. So my guess is it hasn't been changed in a while. And what we're going to be replacing it with is this Napa Pro Select and the part number on it is 23179 if you're looking for a uh, filter for yourself. This one here is showing the direction of flow. And if you read the small print on here, it's got a little arrow on it as well. So you're going to want to make sure you mount it in the same position. Let's get those clamps off there and uh, we'll replace that filter. As soon as I take that line off there, it's probably going to puke out some gas. So you want to make sure you've got a catch can down below to catch it or else you're going to be eating it. And that's not sliding off there very easy. I'm going to get a, something to pry that clamp off with. So all I'm using here is a pair of side cutters and we're going to cut that, that uh, clamp off there. Just like that. And that clamp should just peel off and allow us with ease. to make a really, really big mess. Fuel filters are never fun. Just for this one reason right here. Fuel all over the place. Okay, so the quick and easy way to get this thing to stop dripping is to take your new filter and just plug it in right away. So at least now it's not gonna be dripping on us. We gotta get some small clamps and get that clamp back up there and we're done. So now that we've got our fuel filter in place, we're not going to prime the system because now that fuel filter is empty. We're going to cycle the key a few times, fill it up, and then we'll try and start the vehicle, make sure uh, everything's going to start and there's no leaks. So let's try that, and then we're going to tackle the low windshield washer, which I think has a hole in it. So we'll tackle that next. So as we check for leaks, please note there is no seepage here. Where we put this clamp on, there's absolutely none back here where we put this clamp on. But the weak point was where the previous clamp is. It is now weeping, so we've got to replace that clamp as well. I'll do that, and then we'll make our way up front and find the couple of leaks we've got up there. 
I'm not sure if you guys can see it or not, but right up in here, I can see oil starting to seep out of those cracks, which basically means we're gonna end up having to replace some of these oil cooler lines. So that's not gonna happen today, but I will get it done very, very soon. In the meantime, we've gotta check the oil, make sure that it's still up there and that we're not dripping it all out. So the other thing that we wanted to check out today was to do with the check engine light. Now, when I scanned it the last time, the light went out, stayed out for probably three or four days before it came back on, but now it's back on and it's code number 16795, secondary air injection system incorrect. Let me show you what that is. With just a little bit of Googling, I've come to find that these 1.8 liter engines with the turbo are known for the secondary air injection pump going bad. On this car, it's right there. And the way to know for sure whether it's working is when you first turn the car on when it's cold, you should hear it start up and it almost sounds like a little bit of a vacuum cleaner. I don't have that. So I'm going to take a look, see what these things are worth and probably have to get one ordered up and get that switched out to help get that uh, engine light out. And you know what? It could very well be a root cause of the stuttering or hesitation that we're having. Not sure. We're going to hit them all. Anyways, we'll go take a look at that. Last thing we've got to look at is the windshield washer reservoir. And I think I've already found out what the problem is. Now, remember when we first bought the car, there was a great big gaping hole here in the bumper. Well, we've kind of stuck a piece of plastic in there to kind of hold, uh, hold things together and keep the weather out of it. Uh, but in behind there is the windshield washer reservoir. And unfortunately, it does have a crack in it. So what we're going to end up having to do is take this bumper cover off to be able to get up in there and uh, replace it or fix it, see if we can fix it but I don't want to have to take that bumper cover off twice. So I think what I'm going to do is research, find out what a reservoir is going to cost off of a used car. If it's only a few bucks, I'll get it coming and then we'll just kind of do it all at once. So that means everything that we came in here today to do is done. So before we go, we are going to check the oil and make sure that it's up. If not, we'll top that up and then we'll be sure to get those lines fixed in a hurry. We don't want to be running this thing dry of oil, not just cooking the motor, but cooking that turbo too. This is just meant to be a winter beater. I don't want to be spending thousands of dollars trying to get this thing going. So anyways, that's going to do it for today's video and uh, let's close it out. So at this point guys, I have decided to park the Grey Goose for the rest of the weekend until we can get those oil lines fixed. And the reason why was because when I left here, I took off to go home and realized I forgot my camera. So I came back to the shop and that is when I noticed this. That oil leak is from the car sitting there only long enough for me to back it out of the garage, bring it around here, park it, go inside, close the door, lock it and come out. And then when I left and came back, it left this spot in the short period of time for me to come out and notice the bigger one where it was sitting a little bit longer. So I'm going to take the Elantra home uh, for the week, uh, for the rest of the weekend. And that way, that'll give us some time to get the Grey Goose in and get those oil cooler lines fixed, replaced, uh, whatever we're going to do to keep it from leaking. In the meantime, that's where we stand. I hope you guys have had a great week. We've got some great content coming your way in the very near future. So stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless. We'll do it again real soon.